Hello, this is Ekla Petridou. It's Friday, the 14th of August 2020. This is our weekly video in English. The title of the video is Do you know what happens to men after marriage and after having children? Any idea? And this is a request for this video from a, a viewer that her husband is not uh, speaking any Greek in order to make a similar video to a video I made uh, in Greek language a few days ago. The video I made uh, was um, originated, the idea about the video, from a viewer who wrote an email and she said his pro she, 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 she put her um, problems and uh, difficulties to me and asked for my comment. She was she's married for four years. She has a young child at the age of three. When the, this child was born, um, faced some uh, health issues that now are no longer there, thank God. And um, she says that she had a very good relationship, a romantic and love relationship with her husband at, until the time she gave birth. Uh, she was being very strong for the child when uh, the child had the health issues, but her husband uh, collapsed emotionally. And she realized that she had to uh, pay some attention to her husband as well and not to be uh, uh, exclusively attentive on the child. Um, she tried to help him to overcome his emotional difficulties after the health issues of their child. They said a lot of things. They did, uh, they started new activities and she started not to be such a, an overbearing mother. She found time for herself, for her husband. She was trying to uh, spend uh, quality time with him. But after three years, uh, the problem is that they are not having any sexual relationships, even though they are married. The last uh, six months before she wrote the letter, her, her husband stopped having any sexual um, contact with her. Uh, the last time they were together, she spoke to him clearly and she told him that it's very important for her to feel that her husband wants her and he just slept with her for a night and then stopped. She says that she's a very happy person, she's not nagging, she likes uh, to dance, to sing, she likes music, she does everything in the house by herself and her husband is not such a cheerful person, so she tries to go along with his rhythms. Uh, she says that her husband is only uh, dealing with his job, uh, ha spending some time with the baby and uh, playing uh, games online. She goes out by herself until uh, very late, not very often, but when she goes out, her husband doesn't even look for her. He doesn't even text her. They don't have any other problems at the house and she's wondering what is happening. Does, she, da, does he have a girlfriend? She looked, there is, she has no clue about this. And she says that uh, she's uh, in a difficult position because uh, many men flirt here and she doesn't respond to their flirt, but for how long she wonders. Uh, we have a very good relationship, friendly relationship in the house and I feel that he's a good father and a good husband, apart from the fact that he doesn't have any sexual life with her. She says that she's young. I guess she's around the age of 35. And um, she, f she has the need of having a, a, a frequent love life. She asked her husband to go to a therapist. Uh, he says he's going, but for the last six months he, does, he didn't go. She doesn't like to put pressure on her husband, but how much time, she asks, she wonders, can I live without passion in my marriage? I would like to ask my husband to touch me, to show that he wants me. He shows a lot of love to her and her the baby, but it's like a friendly love or a brotherly love. What should I do? She asked me, do you think that other women are, are in this position, the same position I am? I feel that I fight with my demons not to, um, not to indulge in other people's uh, flirt, in other men's flirt. Please advise me. So I made this video for her in English and one of my viewers uh, commented, I told my husband the truth many times, but nothing happened. I have the same problem. We have two kids. 
two young children. My husband doesn't have a girlfriend. He stopped, he stopped having sex with me after we had the second child. Now we're separated. Uh, could you please, please make this video in English so that I could send to him to watch? Okay. Here we are. On my Greek video, I try to make some uh, hypothesis on why the um, viewer's husband might have stopped having uh, sexual relationships with her. You understand that um, I cannot make a diagnosis through a YouTube video. I cannot uh, solve a puzzle or a riddle, but I could give some insight so that the viewers, if they face the same problems, can have some guidelines on how to deal with it. First of all, uh, when you are married, one uh, basic principle of marriage is the sexual relationship of the couple. For me, as a psychologist, as a woman, as a social scientist, there is no reason for people to get married unless they have sexual chemistry, they like each other, they are in love with each other, and of course, if they match and they are compatible as a couple. Even if you match with somebody, even if you have similar ideas, similar views about life, even if you share uh, your hopes and dreams, etc., and you are a good social match or a good um, um, educational match or a good uh, economic match, but you do not match sexually, late, later, sooner or later, you're going to have problems. Uh, so for me, and the, from the point of view that I see things, it is crucial, essential, important for a couple to have sexual attraction and uh, enjoy their love life together. What happens, though, in situations where people get married, they have children, and maybe their child might have some health difficulties, like the, uh, the lady who wrote the email in Greek, and these health difficulties affect the emotional well-being of the parents, or what happens in the situation that some people get married, and very early on the marriage, they have children, and they might have twins or they might have the one child after the other and they are lifestyle changes and they find themselves in a routine which they haven't predicted before getting married. First of all, um, it's more common for women to abstain from sex in marriages. But it's not rare that the husband does, that the man does. Um, I cannot be sure what happened in the first case or in the second case. In the first case, I would make the hypothesis that um, uh, the husband of the first uh, viewer uh, might uh, suffer from depression. He might have depression, and one of the symptoms of depression is uh, lack of libido, lack of sexual um, interest lack of um, any incentive to have sexual life. Maybe. I cannot diagnose, I say again, I am a psychologist, but this is a YouTube video, this is an informatory video, so I'm not making any diagnosis for anybody. Maybe, maybe he suffers from depression. And in that case, if somebody has depression, the mature and responsible thing to do is check themselves into a psychologist's office and a psychiatrist's office to get diagnosed and get, and get proper treatment. When you suffer from depression, you really need to have uh, uh, a session, an assessment, excuse me, assessment of your situation, a clinical psychologist, and it would be better to combine the two specialties, a clinical psychologist and a psychiatrist, assess the client or patient, and they recommend therapy. Therapy might be psychotherapy or combined psychotherapy with antidepressant medications. If this is the case, if depression is the case, the patient should seek for treatment. Depression is like any other um, physical situation. I mean, if you have a disease, for example, if you're diagnosed with diabetes, aren't you gonna uh, 
uh, go to to a doctor, uh, make tests, and then follow uh, your treatment. The same is with depression. Even though depression is uh, more easily manageable than diabetes, being a diabetic uh, patient myself, I think that depression is more easily manageable once you are diagnosed, once you have access to psychotherapy and antidepressant medication. Another reason that the husband might not be interested in having sex with his wife anymore might be that he stopped loving her. This might happen because when people fall in love, tend to rush things. They tend to be together with the other person the more, the, the, the more time, uh, as, as much time as possible. When they have the first uh, uh, the first fling, um, they might uh, take uh, very crucial uh, life uh, life uh, decisions in a very uh, in, in a very small amount of time. I think that it is crucial for all the couples. It is essential to wait for at least one year of the relationship before they decide if they will marry or not. And I'm talking about people that are of age. I mean, after the age of 30 years old or 26, 27, 28, 29 years old, if someone is eligible for marriage, I mean, if they have finished their studies, if they have financial balance, if they are mature enough to understand and take the responsibility of a marriage, they proceed to the uh, marriage when they are ready and when they've tested the relationship. And you need at least one year to test the relationship. Uh, the reason is that the first um, uh, emotional reaction of somebody who falls in love can uh, last for at least nine months. If it's just a fling, you could have sexual attraction for the other person for at least nine months, or for, for mostly nine months. Neuropsychologists have observed that uh, at the courtship, at the beginning of a courtship, uh, of a new couple that they have some attraction for each other and they have a fling or they have a crush on each other, uh, certain, uh, certain um, uh, neurotransmitters or hormones are very high in their brain, in their blood for the first three months. The next uh, three months, they are, uh, they are still high, moderately high, and the next three months, they are falling down. This is uh, very easily explained by our uh, genes, our DNA, that uh, even though we live in modern times, we carry um, a primitive DNA. And primitive people in primitive societies, they didn't have romantic love, they didn't have uh, the establishment of marriage, they just had sex with each other and had children with each other. So nature provided so that there is some connection between the male and the female for at least nine months in case they have a child together so that the, the male stands by the female. So in order to see if our crush, if our new love interest is something more than chemistry, if something more than physical attraction, we should wait for at least one year. That's my, that's my opinion. That's my suggestion. You don't have to follow it. I'm just saying my opinion. For at least one year of a continuous relationship where they meet at least uh, every couple of days, so that they see how they are together. And if it, it's even better if they live together, if they cohabit, in order to test their relationship. So after you live for a year, for at least a year with the other person, and all the hormones are um, um, settled or calmer, then you can see clearly whether this is a good match for you, and the, whether you have love, erotic love, uh, you have a long-lasting uh, love relationship which is stronger than pure chemistry, than pure physical attraction. Uh, hormones are excellent. Uh, they serve many purposes in our life, but according to my opinion, we cannot build a life on hormones. We, take a, we, we take our hormones into account, but I also take other things into account. So if you have rushed, now I'm talking to the second uh, viewer who requested for this video in English. If you have rushed your, rushed your marriage or if you got married 
without uh, both of you being on the same page, after a year, a couple of years, and after uh, having young children and being in a very different way of life, because having young children is difficult, having young children is a mess, having just a mess, having young children, raising them is something that I did myself. I have a son who is 23 years old and my daughter who is 20 years old. So for the last 23 years, I have experienced being a parent. So uh, being a parent is stressful enough. Being a parent in a relationship with somebody that you didn't test well before becoming a parent can be even more stressful. Uh, dear friend that you wrote the second, uh, the second uh, comment and you asked for this video in English, go and do show this video to your um, um, husband, even though you say that you are separated. You can watch it together and ask him honestly, do you feel any sexual attraction towards me? And if he answers clearly that he does not, you should respect this. Shit happens. Life happens. We can be begin a marriage with the best of intentions and we can find ourselves in a point that after our hormones are calmed down, after reality hit in, that we do not belong in that marriage. And it's a basic human, human right for everybody to be in a marriage or to choose not to be in a marriage. I do not believe that uh, marriage kills love. I do believe that marriage tests love and it shows if, some, if a couple are really in love with each other and they are a really compatible couple and they made a wise choice or if they are just two people who happened to meet and they had a crush and they continued having a marriage without thinking it through and without being mature enough. And being mature is not a matter of age only. It's also a matter of mentality and a matter of spirituality. Nevertheless, if your husband that now you are separated from declares to you that he has no sexual desire about you and he, do, he's, he does not feel in love with you anymore, he should take responsibility for his children like every decent human being. Uh, you start the relationship because you feel in love with, uh, with another person or, be, or because you think you are in love with another person. You proceed to a marriage. You proceed to have children. You are not in love anymore. The um, responsible thing to do is to talk honestly about your feelings and take your responsibilities. Your responsibilities as a father is to spend time with your children, is to pay for child support, and is to be actively engaged in your life's child, in your, in your children's lives, even though you might be separated or divorced from their mother. Dear friend, I'm sorry to tell you this. I suppose you expected for something different from me, but in this situation that you are, you are separated with your husband and you have spoken clearly to him and you put uh, your problems into his perspective and he still doesn't react in the way you expect, it is very possible that this um, emotion or sentiment he had for you finished. This doesn't mean that you are not lovable. This doesn't mean that you. Are, this doesn't mean that you are not a woman worthy of being loved, worthy of being adored, worthy of being worshipped. Even it just merely means that your decision about marriage, your communal decision, was not a wise one. But life happens and we have to move on and moving on um, requires um, to accept the other person's wishes and the other person's feelings if he doesn't want you he has every right not to want you and you cannot make him want you if he doesn't it is not very easy for a man or for a woman to separate from their uh, from their uh, spouse in order for somebody to ask for separation, there are serious reasons and you should know about it. And serious reasons are not just he has a girlfriend or he has a boyfriend or she has a girlfriend or she has a boyfriend. It's not serious reasons for divorcing or for uh, stopping a marriage or, or, or from, from separating from a marriage or a cohabitation is not 
just uh, to be unfa- unfaithful. Stopping loving the other person is a major reason for divorce. And it's a, may, it's a basic human right to divorce somebody you are not in love with. So I don't know. I'm just making hypotheses. You asked me to make this video in English. I made it in English. I didn't say exactly the same things I said in Greek in the Greek video, because in the Greek video that husband did not ask for separation. He did not ask for divorce. He continued staying in the house. He continued stating that he loved his wife and he wanted to be with her. Your situation is my is more clear, and I I feel empathy about your pain. Rejection, love rejection is uh, painful. It can be painful for everybody, no matter their age, no matter their life experiences. I wish you the best. I wish you to recover um, shortly from this uh, torment. And in order to recover, it's essential that your situation clarifies, gets, gets clarified. Living in uncertainty and living in separation and not knowing for sure that your marriage has finished or not is something that does not help you to get over with it. I send you my love to you and everybody. And if anybody is watching this video that they have difficulties with their partner, that they they find they find themselves or their partner not being attracted sexually to each other, please seek for help. Please seek to see a couples therapist. Please, if you are the one experiencing the lack of libido, the lack of sexual desire, you could visit a doctor to help you clear out what happens. You could see a neurologist or an andrologist or a gynecologist if you are a woman. You can have some um, blood tests to see your hormone levels. You can see a psychiatrist to assess you for depression, etc. I wish you the best. Have a nice weekend, everybody. Uh, See you next Friday. Bye.